Don't forget to subscribe to Bird Outdoors, like my videos, and any information you want on the products I'm reviewing, just go ahead and leave me a message. Thanks. Hello, folks. We're going to be doing a review tonight on the Citadel Warthog Shotgun. So for those of you folks that don't know what this is or you're thinking about buying this thing, I'm going to give you the lowdown of what I think of it. Um, there's a lot of videos about this gun on YouTube. A lot of different guys doing a lot of different modifications and um, a lot of videos about how it jams up upon first, um, you know, th throwing some, some lead down the barrel. But I'm going to tell you what I ran into and kind of give you my spiel about the gun. I think it is a heck of a buy. Um, I'll tell you, this isn't my first go-to gun. This is a kick-around gun, uh, something to have around the farm, play around. Uh, shoot skeet, shoot bowling pins, you name it, mess around. I am going to make some modifications to this gun, but it's not my home defense gun. Um, so here it is, the Citadel Warthog, and I'll show you the trademark feature of it. Right there. The Warthog. So it is a three-inch chamber gun, okay, uh, it's distributed by Legacy Sports in Reno, Nevada, and uh, it's made, it's a Turkish gun, it is made in Turkey, and you can see right there, Citadel 12 gauge, 20 inch barrel, 3 inch chamber, it comes with an assortment of shot, uh, of um, tubes, uh, shotgun tubes, cylinder tubes, I can't even think about what they're called right now. Um, choke tubes. There you go. And, uh, I have in it right now modified. Okay. And, uh, the gun shoots actually really well. I'm really impressed with it. Um, I took it skeet shooting. I've shot so far a hundred rounds through it. Okay. And it only had three jams. Now I can tell you that the action had to get worked in. Okay, so there's the action right there. Um, you can see nice and clean on the inside. I cleaned the gun out. But I'll tell you that within the first 25 rounds, and I shot 7.5 inch shot or 8 inch shot, 1,200 feet per second loads. Okay, and there were 2 and 3 quarter. So within the first 25 shots, I got 3 jams. And it was probably sporadic through the first 25 shells. The next 25 shells, they were all smooth. They ejected properly. They loaded properly. There was no issue. And when I took the gun back home, I noticed that the inside of the chamber, okay, um, where the action resides in your bolt, a lot of guys you'll see on YouTube are just completely cleaning these guns out. They're removing all the factory oil. Um, I didn't do that. I left mine in, okay? And when I took it back from shooting at Skeet, there was a slurry on the inside of the action. So I don't know what the engineering is on this gun, how the mill spec works, and how tight are the tolerances that they have. But you could see between the gunpowder and the metal being worked from just shooting, there was a slurry on the inside of the gun. Okay, and I believe that slurry was part of the material of the bolt sliding in and out of the action and into the chamber, um, probably working a little bit of material out that, you know, and getting all the bugs out. You can see right in there, there's actually kind of like a striation uh, in the chamber where the bolt was sliding back and forth. But like I said, those 25 shells after the first 25, they ejected properly. This gun fully functioned properly. I had no issues. So my kind of take on this gun is if you want a cheap kind of th throw around gun that's dependable, but not like your home defense, well, this is it. Um, there's a lot of 
information out there on YouTube about how much these guns cost. I heard some people paying 400. I heard some people paying 350. I heard some people paying 300. Um, Dunham's, and I don't know all the locations of Dunham's throughout the, the nation. They're selling this gun for 249. A semi automatic shotgun for 249 bucks. That's a heck of a deal. So again, I'm not, I'm not planning on using this for home defense. This is kind of my kick around gun and something I can have fun with. And that's, that's actually what I did. I took it out skeet shooting twice. I put a hundred rounds completely through the gun. It cycled flawlessly. No issues. I was only using 1200 feet per second shot. And like I said, I had three jams. Uh, some of the modifications I made so far is it didn't come with uh, studs for a uh, sling. And you can see right there, I drilled out the front cap, okay? And uh, I attached a stud for a sling, and I inserted one in the back right there. And you'll see on some of the other videos that folks have that there's a screw that holds in the butt plate uh, or your recoil pad. And you remove that screw, and you can put a stud screw in there for a swivel swing sling, and that's what I've done. So I will kind of give you one little warning about it, and I'm going to uh, remove this end cap with the sling, if it will. No, that's hitting. Okay, so let me let me just remove that real quick. I'm kind of fighting this with my hand. Okay, there we go. So I removed this end cap, the magazine tube cap, and you can see inside there, if you can, there's that stud that's sticking out, okay? Well, it just so happens the the end of your magazine and your retainer right there, your spring retainer has a hole in it. So that stud will screw right into that hole and you make clearance. Okay, so a little tip for you guys that want to put a sling on it. But again, for 250 bucks, I don't think you can beat this gun. Thank you.